to show you my uh, water top off and standby system. If you remember from last year, this blue barrel here used to be my top off, but it's uh, with the squash plants drinking up so much water, I ended up filling it up every day and not going to be too much. So I also had this these green barrels as standby water over here behind the wall. So I'd fill them up, let them dechlorinate, and then use it to fill reservoirs. But uh, I tired, got tired of filling up reservoirs with uh, buckets, so I decided to move it over here and combine the systems. So right now, the three barrels, total of 165 gallons, are connected here on the bottom with the three quarter inch PVC. And one thing I did since last year is I put a coupling piece so I can disconnect the barrels and do any uh, maintenance on them if I need to. Let's see if I can get an under view here. There we go. And they're connected up into the barrels there and gooped because I had a little bit of leak on all three barrels. And then when I to fill them up, I put a filter here that will filter out a lot of the minerals and crap in our water here that we have. And now goes right up my hard pipe into the barrel. And then for the uh, top off system, I have flexible tubing, which is one of the improvements I'm going to do down the road. Is uh, improve this probably hard piping in. I have a cutoff valve here, so I can shut it off when I'm doing maintenance. But it gets fit into the greenhouse right here. Let me show you the other end. As I'm the blue barrels now being used for rainwater and putting in water when I empty the reservoirs. I don't like to waste any water, so I can use this water for uh, house plants. And then I'm going to put another green 55 gallon barrel here into the system, so I'll have over 200 gallons for top off and storage. And what I do is I just shut off the valve into the greenhouse, fill it up wait 24 hours or so for it to dechlorinate and then uh there goes the puppy and then i'll open the valve back up i also have a spigot here to uh fill up buckets house plant water you know whatever i need water for that's been dechlorinated and filtered so let's go inside the greenhouse he's looking for gophers so I'm in the greenhouse here. Still in a mess in the back. I'm redoing the back. So this is where it comes into the greenhouse. And I have one line coming here into a reservoir for the squash and bell peppers. And then I have another line going over here. And right now it just goes and feeds the reservoir for the uh, leafy green system, which I'll be putting the plants in the next couple days. They're about inside in the seeding tray. And here we have, it's connected to a float valve. So when the water level goes down, I'll just get up close here, hopefully don't drop my phone. When the water goes down, you can see it there. Water gets released into the system and tops it off. That way I'm not filling up reservoirs every day or every other day. Hopefully with 150 gallons, I'll only have to do it once a week. I do check the reservoirs every day or every other day for pH levels and make sure they're up to snuff, PPMs and everything. So that's it. It was pretty simple to build. Most expensive part being the uh, barrels of course. I got them. There's a, a drum shop here in town. I think I paid 20 bucks a piece for them. Food grade barrels so they're clean. And I'll probably be going in the next next couple weeks or a month to pick up another barrel to add here and I'll probably get a couple barrels because I'm going to start a uh, aquaponic system or a wicking system out here 
So that will be the next project to put in a uh, wicking bed here and a wicking bed in the back to grow some soil plants and then eventually I want to put a pond in and turn it into an aquaponic system. So that's it for today of our top off reservoirs and standby water.